So um, I think it's it's amazing that the word is out and that you heard about this project. Thank you, Jean, and thank you, uh, whoever brought it to Yelizaveta. Um, I think, well, I'm a big tango fan that this is like number one. This is the genesis of it, of it all. But I'm also a pianist and uh, I lived in Buenos Aires until very recently when I moved to New York. Now I'm in Buenos Aires right now because of the pandemic, but I'm actually living in Brooklyn right now. And um, when I when I started studying tango, I was uh, very lucky that a lot of the great maestros were still alive and received me. Um, I went to study with Emilio Valcarce, for instance, for a couple of years. He, in case you don't know the name, he composed La Bordona, Sisov Brujo, arranged for Troilo, played 20 years with uh, Pugliese, I mean, one of the giants. Then I got to play with Leopoldo Federico and record with Maria Graña. I mean, I was very, very lucky. Um, but I was always trying to go to the source to, to learn from the source because tango, being a musician, learn how to play tango, it's it's not an easy task, but because there's not a lot of scores and there is not a lot of educational material you can access. So you probably have to go ask the guy directly if he's still alive and if he's willing to talk to you <laughs> or something. Um, so that being said, uh, there was one maestro that really caught my attention. Uh, his name was Horacio Salgan. We actually had him for a hundred years. He passed away in 2015. And he was a very peculiar maestro from the golden age of tango because um, he was, uh, for you to, to get a picture, his first recording is not a tango, it's Brazilian music. He used to play choros and he played jazz and he played folk music and then he got into tango and put together his Orquesta Típica. Not uh, without participating in Miguel Caló Orchestra, writing for uh, Roberto Firpo and just mostly all the big names in tango but aside of that he was also jazz and a folk musician so his music is very interesting. I'd like to show you a little taste because I, I became some sort of a fan of this guy. So I was doing a lot of research and I like to share some of the cool uh, videos and recordings I got for you to get an idea of what I'm talking about. Let me very quickly. Ah, there we go. Take a look at this. This is from the from 56, I think. He's playing with Waldo de Lillo, an electric guitarist. Horacio Salgan actually was training classical music when he was young. He was a uh, roommate, uh, he was a uh, mate with Marta Argarich. They went to the same teacher. You can definitely see this too in his playing. You can, I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can easily uh, take, uh, take a hear of those jazzy chords right away. 
Um, wait, I, I'm seeing the chat. Uh, it's not Emilio Valcarce himself, but Orquesta Escuela that he founded together. Oh, right. Yeah, well, I was in the very last, I was luck, very lucky. I was in the very last Orquesta Escuela that had Maestro Emilio Valcarce himself. So I, I, I did get to meet him and go on tour with him. I'm super lucky. And tomorrow we're playing uh, at the Teatro Colón. The Orquesta Escuela I was part with. Uh, um, I was part of like 10, 15 years ago with Emilio. It's playing in the Cologne Theater tomorrow and they will feature me as a guest artist. So you're all invited. It's going to be free of charge. It's going to be streamed uh, over the ch the YouTube channel of Teatro Colón. I can leave the the link after, after I'm done if you're interested. Okay, so... Um, Back to, to Horacio Salgan. For you to get an idea of how much of a pianist he was, he got some, some reviews, some uh, uh, reviews that expressed admiration for him from three pianists in classical music. One of them was Jean-Yves Thiboudet, which he's like the, one of the icons of French piano playing. Then Daniel Barenboim also said the same thing. And even, even Arthur Rubinstein, when he was in Buenos Aires, would go to the, to, the tango, uh, to the tango bars to watch him play. So he was definitely something special. Uh, he was working alongside, you know, at the same time as Piazzolla was. And they were both evolutionists of tango. Of course, you heard Piazzolla before, but to me, there is a big difference about the approach on the evolution of tango on these two geniuses. Piazzolla was trying to break the limits of tango structure and keep the spirit of it, but just uh, mix it with the structure of jazz, of classical music. He actually did some symphony orchestra stuff. He put some drums on some, some of his bands. And Horacio Salgan, in a way, did exactly the opposite. He did whatever he could do inside those three minutes uh, that a tango was supposed to last with four bandoneons, four violins, bass, piano, viola, and cello. He always stayed inside the, the traditional tango ensembles, even with guitar. I mean, the big exception would be that this is an electric guitar, but still. So... The thing is that every pianist I know that loves tango is a big admirer of Horacio Salgan. And the thing is that it's very difficult to get scores because back in the day, it was not very accustomed to share the scores. I mean, uh, for instance, De Sarli played, but did, they didn't have any students. So there, was, there is not much of a register, you know, like a written register of what was happening musically back in the day. And unfortunately, the way they recorded the big orchestras here in Buenos Aires was with just a few microphones and a very big hole. So it's very difficult to transcribe exactly what happens in each instrument with uh, this quality of recording. And uh, well, with Salgan, it's no exception. It's very difficult to find scores and it's, very frustrating at some point because he did some breakthrough uh, discoveries in tango and harmony, melodies. He was very inventive and yet it, there is no scores to analyze it or to learn it from and such. And uh, well, just a few years ago, about five years ago or so, I got my hands into this absolute treasure a recording of a piano solo concert of Horacio Salgan. This was like the rarest thing ever because he will always play either with his uh, guitar player, uh, with um, Ubaldo de Lillo, with the Quinteto Real, that was another group of his, that let me just tell you the names 
of the people that was in Quinteto Real, you know them from the, from the tandas you dance to. The bandoneon was Pedro Lawrence. The violinist was Francini. And then the guitar, his piano, and the bass player named uh, Rafael Ferro. This was like an all-star quintet. And this guy wrote the music for all of them. It's very exciting. But this solo piano concert was, I think it was the only one where he actually played like a whole concert of tango in piano solo. The thing is that, fortunately, another uh, tango pianist in, in Buenos Aires was clever enough to sneak in, in, in the, on the theater with a Walkman and just record it from the audience. And that's a recording I got my hands into. It's amazing. The quality is pretty decent. And uh, of course, that recording is, is not, it, it can't be released. It's just a collector's item. Um, but he actually plays the most beautiful arrangements. And it's like, if he could concentrate the whole orchestra into what he's playing in piano solo, it's, it's, and it's analysis material. It's like a master class on how to play uh, a tango on piano. And I had to start transcribing it. It took me like a year and a half to to transcribe note by note everything he played that night. I actually got some apps to ralentize the recording and just try to hear the most minimal detail. And this project is about bringing this um, recital into a music book with all the the scores for to be uh, accessible to any pianist all around the world. It's going to be a PDF edition, so you can just get it from my website. And since the recording I have, it can't really be released because of, well, it's it's just a bootleg, to be honest. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna very hum humbly uh, record these uh, transcriptions I did. This is a project that has been in Kickstarter for a couple of weeks now. Uh, we were very lucky, hopefully. Uh, um, luckily, it uh, hit the minimum already. We're trying to raise more funds to see if we can do, uh, if we can make physical copies of the book or and the CD. But fortunately, the, um, the digital album and the um, and 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 the digital book already are going to exist in a few months so that's very exciting um let me share the uh, the link of the kickstarter maybe yelisaveta do you have it at hand um i will get it in a second so oh, you can cool. go, you can go on thank you um so actually i got really excited with this project and i tried to take it further and i started uh, just doing more research to see if I can get just a couple more tangos to add to the album. And I actually found two. The first one is uh, a, a rare uh, album he recorded in Uruguay in 56, if I'm not mistaken. And the fact it was that he recorded all the orchestra arrangements he had and he still needed to fill four more minutes on the, on the LP, so he cr he wrote a, a piano solo arrangement of La Cachila, which is an amazing tango, by the way, and recorded it in that album. That's actually the only uh, official piano solo recording that Horacio Salgan ever did, and that's going to be featured in the album as well. And I found another one, which I don't have much information of, but it's kind of funny because it's him playing in a birthday party back in the 80s or something. I actually have a video. I actually have the video. It's not great quality, but I'd like to share it with you. Anyways. Let, ah, there you go. He's going to play this amazing song. It's called Fuimos. You probably know it.
okay now if you allow me uh yeah that's that's actually fuimos if you allow me i would like to play this transcription i did on on this rare footage uh, so I'm going to play Horacio Salgan's arrangement of Fuimos. Um, just let me get the proper camera. Let's do a, a very quick test. Um, a very quick sound check. You can hear this? Is that yes. a yes? Okay, cool. Yes, okay, so here we go. Let's go with Fuimos. I think this deserves a round of applause. Everybody, please unmute yourself. Oh. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Bravo, bravo. Bravo, bravo. Bravo, bravo. Bravo, bravo. Bravo, bravo. Muchas gracias. Beautiful. Lindo. Precioso. Muchas gracias. Actually. Sorry, I had to mute you. Uh, so unmute. That's all right. I'm back. Um, yeah, you, you can imagine what is it. Well, Elisabetta, you're a pianist yourself. Can you imagine what it is to get a full book with 10, 12 arrangements of this kind? I mean, 
it's, it's uh it's literally priceless i mean this is making history that you know i i just feel we're honored that you are doing this because now this music can survive into the future so thank you <laughs> and i always thought that was curious that only i mean don't, don't get me wrong i admire piazzola and piazzola is one of the great genius of argentine music but how is it that uh when i got into the states everyone knew Piazzolla and probably a lot of musicians actually played Piazzolla's music in the States. And when I talked about Salgan or De Sarli or they probably didn't heard the name. And I think it has something to do with the fact that Piazzolla is the only scores you can access from abroad Argentina. And uh, I think tango, it's so rich and should be discovered for by a lot of people all around the world. So this is just a small step towards musicians all over the world getting to know this wonderful music. 